Good evening, everyone. WLSN presents the Three Wise Men podcast. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Miles Holiday and Nate Garlock. Gentlemen, here we are again. How was your week? Uh, it's a great week. Uh, football's coming to a conclusion. We got some great games in front of us. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I can't believe we're already heading into week eight. Everybody's focusing on conference uh, championships, playoff positioning. It, it has gone by so fast. It's incredible. Well, let's get right to it. We have got one special guest tonight. And Miles, I'm going to let you introduce our special guest. He stands six foot three and weighs 235 pounds. He hails from Elida High School. He is the sack master, the tackle for lost machine. Offenses fear him. He is the Crim Reaper, Parker Crim. Sometimes, sometimes you just got to entertain them. It's all right. <laughs> Parker, thanks for coming on the show, buddy. We really appreciate Thank it. Thank you for having me. I, I was, before we have any questions, I just want to clear something up. Miles and I have this longstanding disagreement. Oh, I know the answer. That I, I, do you remember this? Your freshman year, I gave you the nickname the Crim Reaper. No, no, no. We talked no, no. after the OG game. Do you remember no, no. that, yes, Parker? Sir, I do yes, remember he that. does. Yes, I do That's remember. my guy. I that is my guy. That. Wait, I, I said it on air against Defiance his freshman year. No, I, I had him game one of his freshman year, and I called him the Crim Reaper, and I said, that young man is an absolute animal on the field. Maybe great minds think alike? No, he just told you who gave it. But I had no idea that you did it. Hey, 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 Don't hey, par- hey so, uh, you know, <laughs> so Parker, it's really great to have you here, buddy. Let's uh, talk about your high school. God, we'll, we'll get the old men to quiet down in the background a it little bit me. here. <laughs> uh, well, hey, we are thrilled to have you, man. Uh, Thank you so much for having me. Let's, uh, let's just talk about your season so far. What, what do you think's happening? What's going good? What do you, what do you want to improve on? Hey, we're, we're week eight this week, so uh, we're so, moving down the pipe. Yes, sir. I d- I think our team could improve throughout the years, but we just need to improve in our game and our offense and our some of our defense is lacking too. We just need to improve and try to get better every week. Well, a big challenge this week with uh, Wapakoneta coming in town uh, without giving us all the game plan. You know, when you guys see them on film, obviously very, very good offensively. Absolutely. You guys saw a potent offense with Bath. Um, what are some things that you're trying to limit when you play Wapakoneta offensively? Well, we're just trying to limit those four plays like ISO, counter, buck sweep, all of the, those type of plays. If we make them do other plays, I think we have a chance against them. But if we don't, we don't have a chance. You know, Parker, when the year started, you know, and we were kind of, you know, previewing the season and talking about teams and, you know, for some reason, for the first beginning of the season, first couple of weeks, you weren't getting a lot of uh, attention. Your name wasn't out there. And it was, I mean, I think we all talked about it on a variety of different shows we were on together, how it, it was just mind boggling that somehow you were almost seemingly underappreciated, if, especially for what you do on the field. 77 total tackles this year. You're up to, uh, I believe it's 15 tackles for loss, eight sacks, and Every snap on both sides of the ball, you're facing a double team of some kind. Teams are scheming against you. I believe it was Salina after that Salina game where they just came out and said, well, we just wanted to see where Krim was, and then we just went to the other side. <laughs> what it is it – I mean, you still are having a ton of success this year, but how much has it had to change your game knowing week in and week out teams are single-handedly scheming just to stop you? Honestly, if – when teams are like that and they run away from you, that just makes me try harder because I just need to get – them to the backside and then chase the play down because I need those tackles. So we, <laughs> I can't let those go go through my hands. Play, play hard every single play. Parker, when you look at your teams of the last few years, I, I've said it on this podcast and we've, we've amongst us have talked about it. I don't think there's a program that's been more snake bitten with injuries than you guys. Yeah. You know, you lose your quarterback your freshman year, you lose your quarterback your sophomore year. It, it just seemed like, you know, really good players are going to. What did, did you have to step in, in a leadership role and, t- and, you know, tell guys, hey, we can get through this? How's that been for you? Yeah, I've been trying to, like, lead other people by vocally and by example. Like on the O line, when someone messes up, we just next play. Mm-hmm. Defense, next play. That's a great attitude. It's all it's all about that, man. It's all about that. Well, Danny brought up the injuries. Uh, you lost Tyler Seifker in week one. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, he was going to be a huge part of what you guys do. 
Um, how tough was it? Because, I mean, if there's one guy that can power clean more than you, <laughs> yeah. it, it was him. <laughs> yeah. So at losing a guy like that early in week one, how tough was that for you guys? Yeah, he was a big leader in our group. But when he went down, most of our offense went down with it. Mm -hmm. But we just have to keep improving, keep improving. He's there every day. Like, we just have to improve because he's ruined for us. We have to do all for him. You know, obviously, you guys uh, had a good season last year, you know, coming off of that playoff victory. So coming into this season, expectations are high, right? We're going to take that next step. You know, we're expecting to have more wins, go a little bit further in the playoffs and be challenged for a conference title. Obviously, things have not gone that way so far this year. You guys have, have not enjoyed the same success, at least as you did last year. What's that been like trying to navigate that with the team and coach, keep everybody motivated? It's hard coming in week out or week in and week out not having the success that you guys expect you set yourselves to have yeah honestly we just have to have that mentality that we are rebuilding as a team because of the injuries and everything like that so we just have to get better every week so we we're ready for next season but we have to be ready for Walpole too so it's like we're gonna have to have to fight for this one are that's you guys great. are you guys finding motivation and maybe uh playing that spoiler you know like that's you know what we may not be able to win that crown but we can keep you from doing it type of mentality absolutely because if we win this game it's going to be a bigger upset than Vanderbilt <laughs> or Alabama <laughs> anyone change their name to Diego <laughs> <laughs> well, look that's a great segue talking about Vanderbilt and Alabama let's talk about your college opportunities because you're being recruited by a lot of heavyweights that's talk true. about who you're being recruited by and how that whole process is going so i have two offers from Toledo and Akron but I've been on game day visits to Michigan, Notre Dame, Michigan State. I'm about to go to Cincinnati next weekend. You nice. would not look good in Michigan collars. No. I didn't, you know, and, and, and nothing, not, and I, no. you know, I'm not biased. Who wants to go to Ann Arbor? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not very not good. Not nice city. Yeah, I'm not a fan of them either, honestly. <laughs> Ah, I love this guy. <laughs> so who's Michigan, Michigan State, who else? And then uh Cincinnati and then um to Notre Dame, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. I went on a Notre Dame visit um two weeks ago. And yes, it was that was great. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a really Dame. cool place, isn't yeah. it? Tell yeah. us how those visits went. What did they do? You did really wine good. and dine you, what was that? Yeah, they they um got us stuff to eat, they let us watch the game. Some of them were really big games, and we I loved it. Loved it. That's amazing. That's so did you cool. like Michigan State? Yeah, I did. Did you? I okay. did. All I right. love their field. their grass field, so I love it. I oh, loved right, it. right. It's yeah. like you guys have it at so, so little nobody's listening. Who's the front runner? Who's who's who are you looking at? They're like, man, that's where I'd like to go. I love Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, you can't go wrong. Look, I'm a Buckeye fan, but you cannot go wrong. Miles and I went up there last year. What what an incredible place. Absolutely, and their education is unmatched with any other. Oh college, yeah, that too. Honestly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> School. Uh, school. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you want to go into in, in college? Uh, I want to major in business and minor in physical therapy. Oh, wow. Okay. So, you know, I, I love talking to kids who are being recruited because it doesn't matter if you're being recruited at NAIA, JUCO, D321, whatever it is. Being recruited is a special thing. This is the only time in your life where you're going to experience all of this type of thing where people, you know, coming and wanting you to do things and recruiting in this nature. But it, at times it's got to be overwhelming, especially when you're getting recruited at the level that you're getting recruited with, the, you know, the big name schools like Notre Dame. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of other schools coming as this process continues for you. What do you do to keep yourself kind of humbled and in check and not let it get too big or too overwhelming for you? Honestly, being a leader means you got to be humble. So like every time that anybody talks about my offers, we just got, I say we got to do our jobs and we can all get offers at that point. So like, it's, it's just a thing to me that offers don't mean anything until we all just have success, honestly. That's a mic That's drop, great, man. Yeah. That I, love awesome. like, I love it. I like that. <laughs> yeah. what, what's the dream school? Like, the offer comes, they offer you today, and tomorrow you're like, yes, I, I'm accepting this. Florida. I love Florida. 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 Really? Florida. Okay. Yeah. Ohio State doesn't interest you? Or? It, it does. It's a, it's a great yeah. thing to say that you have Ohio State offer, but honestly – just the transfer point and everything like that. I got to take that into account. Sure. Yeah. All that. Yeah. You know, I'm glad you actually brought that up since we're, I mean, we're kind of having this recruiting conversation. You know, we've been talking about the transfer portal for a couple of years and how it's transforming schools, mm -hmm. you know, and it really has hurt recruiting for a lot of kids just because of, you know, they have to see where people are coming and going. Has that, I mean, I know you're kind of still in the early stages of your recruiting, but is that something that you've had to look really close at when you're starting to have these conversations and starting to make your list of where to go? Yeah, honestly, because you just have to look at if the teams will have the transfer portal and then go on to a, like a four-year senior 
and then give up on the third year junior because mm. I want to play at somewhere where I'm just going to play my senior year, maybe because of this transfer report. I want someone that treats it like a family and where Wants you there loyal. Yeah. I try to replace you every year. Absolutely. Yeah. That's great. That's that big to me. All right. So I'd love to see you in the scarlet and gray, of course, you know, mm-hmm. because the Buckeyes, you know, we all well, want to see them win national titles. And I think you would help them do that. If you go to Florida, I mean, are you uh, okay with adopting three uncles to come <laughs> to see you? <laughs> Can you absolutely. get us tickets? Florida's pretty nice. Yeah, uh, not right now. Yeah, like, I, like, can, can, we, can we come in like August or September? Like not so much in October. Oh, so no. look, Parker, you, you you say all the right things, and I'm very impressed with listening to you and your approach to the game and on and off the field. Where did that come from? Who 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 are you playing for? Mom, dad, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles. Who who are you playing for? Uh, everything's for my mom. Everything, everything. She's been through so much, and she's the strongest woman I've ever met in my life. I love her, man. She's. Everything to me. You always pick good guests, Miles. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You do. <laughs> All right. So the whole recruiting thing. How does it start? How important is it to go to camps? How, how do you do? You have to sell yourself a little bit. You know, you're you're talking to kids that are trying to get recruited right now. Give them some advice how to get recruited. Honestly, yeah, you really do have to go to camps, get your name out there, post your film. Honestly, and messaging coaches is a big, really big thing because the coaches aren't going to see you. Our coaches ain't going to look. Right. For just anybody, you have to reach out to them, and then they're going to have their decision on you. Because when you go to camps, it's not just that school's staff, right? There's yeah. other staffs there watching as well, right? Yeah, because that's where I got my Toledo offer, the Ohio State camp. Yeah, that's where I got my Toledo offer. You said Toledo and Akron. Yes, sir. Yeah, so here's something. Who was, who was it first, Toledo or Akron? Akron. So when Joe Moorhead, who, who's got SEC ties, and he's, he's – look, they're not very good, but he is a big-time coach, and he knows what he's doing. Absolutely. What did that feel like when he said, son, I want you to come play football for me? Uh, it was a very good experience. <laughs> it's a great experience. Yeah. Nothing like it, honestly. Just getting that first offer and you know, being like, Whoo, the first one's gone because <laughs> that well, first one's always ours right. to get. Yeah. Others come after that first one, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, now, did you get your picture taken with the turnover tire? <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Don't do that. Uh, yeah, that, your whole career that'll be just round and round. Yeah. And round. <laughs> yeah so, uh, you know, obviously, all the offers and everything with the recruiting and everything ha- has been great. Mm-hmm. But prior to all that, right, it wasn't like you rolled out of bed yesterday and was like, "All right, I'm gonna play football." And here comes all these D1 offers. This has been a process. Absolutely. At what age did you know football become something more than just, "Hey, you know what? I'm having fun out here with my friends." To, "Hey, this might take me places." And then once that kind of clicked. You know, what does it look like since then for you? Honestly, the first time I've made that decision to try to go D1 is after my freshman year because I feel felt like starting varsity, having a good season, I think that I could really do this for another four years of my life, and I really do love it. The sport of football. I, I went to your practice uh, your freshman year, and I, I automatically went to coach. Who's that? <laughs> he was, oh, he's just a freshman because you could just tell. I mean, you got that yeah. ability right off the off the practice. I had field. him that week one, and I'd never heard of you. And I watched it, and I'm like, "Who's the senior?" <laughs> like, uh, he's 14. He's a freshman. I go, he's playing the yeah. class. <laughs> He's going to be really good. <laughs> so, what, so once that happened, you know, what what did that start looking like? You know, obviously getting in the weight room more, more intensity, more reps i mean what has that been like since i mean has it just been all football all the time since then oh yeah absolutely every day is no off days i have to be in the weight room every day eat right to work on my technique every day it's it's a everyday thing you can't i can't take any days off when and you gotta love it if you're gonna put that kind of level of effort and, and energy into something i mean it can't be something that you're just doing to do like you know you you have to love this sport to do it and clearly you do absolutely all right parker i gotta ask you this uh, everybody we have on the show, I ask them, mm-hmm. what's the one school that you like to beat out of everybody? Oh, the one oh, school that you oh, like, oh, if we beat oh, these guys, I'll be happy I for the I rest of my answer. life. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> I have to go Shawnee. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go Shawnee. <laughs> I do. I to. <laughs> but that's a great rivalry. That's what Absolutely. makes a great rivalry, yeah. right? Absolutely. Yeah. I hate every single one of those players. <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> <laughs> on that week, on that week, absolutely. On oh, that week. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good save, good save right there. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, you, uh, this year you picked up the sack record at the school. Is yes, that sir. correct? Uh, what was that moment like when you got that? It was a great moment because it was a great pass rush move that I did. Yeah. Spin move off of two guys. Yeah, it was a great. Spin move. Who taught you to spin move? Where did you get 
Dwight Freeney, he was an <laughs> unbelievable spin move guy. Have you watched him? Oh, uh, yeah. When my older brother lived in Lima, we always used to go over spin moves because that was his favorite move in college. So okay. He, he taught me everything I know. Uh, offensive linemen don't have great feet, and that spin move always works, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. 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 When you're studying an offensive lineman, all right, what are you looking for? And throughout the week, are you like, this move is going to work here against this guy? Because I know coach likes to move you around. Mm -hmm. So does it make it tougher that you have to study so many offensive linemen? Honestly, um, what I look for is like um, when – an offensive lineman is staying back in his stance. Mm -hmm. I know he's going to overset. Right. And that's when I go, go for the inside move. Okay. And then when they, like, forward in their stance, I know I can swim move that every day of the week. So it's honestly just, like, where are their tendencies? What, are their, what do they do on fourth and one? Like, what do teams do? Like, right, right. Just the whole team, honestly. And plus, I love watching film. So it's like I'm going to watch every formation and then try to – take advantage of every formation now does coach give you the freedom like like some guys you know if you're a defensive end you got to rush c gap yeah. you, know, you got to keep the quarterback inside do they give you the freedom like if you can hop inside and get to the quarterback go ahead and do it this year absolutely but sophomore and freshman year absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> you better get that c gap yeah. <laughs> who's, who's the best player you ever played against best player ever played against um where he brought it every play who that's a hard one honestly I haven't played them yet. Honestly, the pl Brian, every, I haven't played a, a player that bright every single play. Do you think people say that about you? No. <laughs> no. no. I, well, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, try to, I'll try to be home right now. Yeah, I can't, I can't do it. I was waiting on you to change the answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so what challenge do you think that you face this week? Obviously, everybody knows Wapak's having a good season. Uh, they traditionally have a pretty good offensive line, mm -hmm. good, uh, a good quarterback right now in Caleb Moyer. Yeah. You know, when you have these matchups where you know that you're going against, you know, these guys who are kind of, you know, maybe a little step up from everybody else, does that bring out more out of you or – yeah, it does because honestly, Grant Hauser, if I if I get him going, I will. That's a D one versus D one yeah, matchup yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, great matchup. That's I'm going against him whole game, so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a matchup. It's gonna be a good, very good matchup. That'll be fun to watch for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So in the classroom, uh, what do you like? Uh, what studies do you do? I mean, what, what's it all about? Honestly, I've been liking social studies recently. Nice history. It's, okay. it's been good. It's been good for me. Do you have a particular part of social studies, like a period of time, maybe World War II, something that you enjoy uh, studying? Probably World War II. Yeah, what you said. Yeah, I really do love that period and studying about it. Now you, you're prolific in the weight room. Absolutely. Uh, your power clean is how much? Uh, 300. 300 power clean. Mm -hmm. that, that's insane. And and you're not a short squatty guy. Yeah, oh. Usually the short yeah. squatty guys. Are, <laughs> that's are, a long way to bring that right, up. That yeah. is a long way. What is the secret to uh, power clean and getting stronger? And, and furthermore, how many calories a day are you eating? It, it's a lot. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I see everything up. My mom always gets mad at me for eating <laughs> the, whole, the whole spot. So is Danny. Yeah. <laughs> My mom gets really mad. <laughs> but honestly, it's just just consistency and then eating right and then eating right's half the battle okay. so you just have to stay consistent with that and then everything else will follow no sugar what do you say eating right come on now I, I was a high school kid too i ate everything in sight yeah the but sugar honestly i have to have that honey but at the end of the day but <laughs> <laughs> love the honesty everything yeah. else i probably I, I try to keep track of what i eat because I do not want to get fat like Kevin was a year ago. <laughs> not trying to be like him. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Parker, we sure do appreciate you coming on the show. Thank um, you. We, look, we're going to follow you this year, next year, and on the college, and uh, we'll get you back here, and uh, we'll keep rooting for you. So yes, best sir. of luck to you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, for right. Thanks, Parker. Parker, appreciate you're it. fantastic. Good luck on Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Huh. All right, guys, it's time for the Diamond Dave Bowen best thing we saw all week. Miles, let's start with you, buddy. Uh, I have a couple. Yeah, uh, you number always one. have more than one. Yeah. <laughs> it's, well, that's the Dave and Diamond Dave yeah. Bowen things of the week, right? Uh, Briston Wise, the quarterback at Van Wert, had them last week against Ottawa Glandorf, goes into overtime. He was unbelievable. Three straight times they ran him off tackle to get the game-winning touchdown in overtime. He would not be denied. But all game long, it, I have never seen a guy Guy that can get outside the pocket on a roll, and no matter what you put in front of him, you're not getting, not stopping him. He's going to get outside of it He's continuously. Really he really was good. absolutely fantastic. You, you, you know the most impressive thing about him? Sure. The Van Wert quarterback 
Yeah. Number one rusher in all the Western Buckeyes. Yeah, yeah. right, right. And they did not turn it over last week, that which was a big problem for them. Absolutely, and yeah. So that's why they were able to beat OG. The second thing I had was, um, guys, have you ever been to Pettisville? I yeah, have not. I've Pettisville not. is amazing, right? I love going there. We did a volleyball match last week. Um, they had Hilltop, and it was for the BBC lead. That community, man, it is like going back in time where everybody cares for each other. Everybody likes each other. Everybody is pulling for each other. It was so much fun to be there again. They treat you first class, and they played out of their minds to be a great Hilltop team with one of the best players in the entire state. They just outworked out hustled and won that match and that place went absolutely crazy it was a great environment yeah you know you're right though there's nothing like small town community high school sport environment like it, it doesn't really seem to matter where you go we have a lot of those communities around here yep. and it 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 is so different than if you go to a big city game compared to just those small communities and how they rally around them it, it, it's a whole different environment for it was sure. so much fun yeah how about you, Nate? The best thing you saw all week? Um, actually, I'm staying in the Western Buckeye League, and I'm staying in the backfield. I'm going with Caleb Moyer. Caleb Moyer oh, for yeah, Walpog had a yeah. phenomenal game. The kid went 23 of 25. He had 354 yards in the air, one touchdown, 12 carries, 78 yards for four touchdowns. That totaled 432 total yards of offense. That is all but 66 of the total yards of offense that Walpock had That's in crazy. that victory. He has been getting better and better, which is a hard thing to believe because everybody knew coming in that he was going to be a great quarterback. Mm -hmm. And somehow every week he is just taking another step forward. It, I mean, 23 of 25, the efficiency in which he throws the ball right. is just crazy. Got to start mentioning him as one of the top players in the area now, don't we? Without oh, a yeah. doubt. Well, he's a field doubt. general. His dad's yeah. the coach, and he, he knows well, the game as well as anybody. And and some of his numbers are a little bit diluted just because of the lopsided scores sure. that Walpock has had. They have He hasn't had to throw it as much. But his QB rating is number one in the Western Buckeye League. It's over 200. I mean, the, the, he's, he completes over 70% of his passes. I mean, kid's phenomenal. He had another great week. By far the best thing I saw coming out of here. Zero. Zero interceptions. Yeah. Not, Absolutely not incredible one. Yeah. for high school football. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Uh, to piggyback on what you guys said, for me, the best thing of the week, and you talked about small town schools and small town values and how they take care of each other. I, I wanted to come up with something different than what I normally do, a game or a player that I've seen. And guys, in the last three weeks, I've watched homecoming ceremonies. Every school has them. And they mm -hmm. never change. And look, we see so many rule changes. We see so many changes in high school football. We see so many you know, people mad about this or mad. At homecoming is a staple in Ohio high school football. We see it every week. It, they, the schools do an incredible job of trying to bring the communities together mm -hmm. and rallying around one thing. And I think it's awesome. I hope they never change it. I love homecoming ceremonies. I, I know it takes longer for us when yeah. we're broadcasting, but it's still awesome. Well, I mean, it, it's so important that when a lot of schools around here had homecoming on that bad weather night a yes. couple of weeks ago, yeah. it didn't stop them. Nope. They either still had them or they moved them into gyms and the packed gyms still doing them. It, this, if you're a school around here that doesn't have football, you still have a homecoming and a homecoming That's court. Right. They just do it during the soccer games. Yeah. I mean, it, you're right. It is absolutely entwined with fall sports in Ohio. My absolutely. first year being a head football coach, we were so bad, we were five homecomings. <laughs> <laughs> True story. We were five that's, 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 You're right. That's I'll, I'll, you, try to, yeah. you try to schedule a winnable game on I'll homecoming. I'll be honest with you. Two weeks ago, I was at Allen East, and they scheduled Grove for homecoming. And I'm like, who's the AD? Who does this? You're either going to have a really <laughs> great homecoming, or you can explain and be like, eh, I mean, it's all right. Now, we're if not I'm the AD, I say, I scheduled this game 15 years ago. My, <laughs> my, my second year we built our own float to take with us yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys let's get to our week eight WOSN schedule we've got some phenomenal games this week like we do every week game one Columbus Grove at Crestview Dave Bowen Jeff Overholzer guys Columbus Grove steamrolling along seven and oh overall four and oh in the league Crestview 3-3, three 1-2 and three, one and two in the NWC. Any chance the Knights can pull off what would be the biggest upset by far this year? No, I, I don't see it happening because they're not going to be able to score enough points, right? This is another Columbus Grove defense that is fantastic. And, and it is kind of fun to watch every single week where Bluffton, and you get to measure Columbus Grove after what Bluffton just did, right? Nope. So you, you know that they're watching each other's schedule and saying, well, they beat them by 42. Well, let's see if we can maybe beat them by a little bit more. More than 42. Now, it's time, guys, that we start talking about Barraza and being a great player, isn't it? 
And I'm not talking about Trent Barraza. <laughs> no, I'm talking about I, Gavin yep, Barraza. You're, you're right. Yes. He is I had that down too. Yeah. Tremendous yeah. corner. He had two interceptions last week, four total. Um, I had them a couple times early in the year. He, I've never seen him get beat vertical on a route. He takes the side of the field. Away. He does a great yeah. job. So how about the Barraza family? Trent with 145 yards and then Gavin with uh, two interceptions last week. Great to be a Barraza. Barraza and Barraza law firm. Yeah, yeah I mean, I you know, Columbus Grove is, is doing a fantastic job you know um, Crestview still trying to kind of work in their backup quarterback in Hux he's had a few weeks right but you know he's Mm -hmm. it always takes a little bit of time and because you haven't had all summer you haven't had all those reps you know it does take a little bit of time now maybe we we see something Fort Lormie did slow down Barraza a little bit especially in that first half last week I mean he only finished with 140 some odd yards after going for over 300 the week before only 140 Uh, and you know but that there, it did take them a little bit to get going. So there may be a little bit of tape out there that teams can start kind of picking apart and saying, okay, well, how did Fort Lormie slow him down, and can we do that over long stretches now? So it'll be interesting to see if there's some game planning there. Crestview does have a good defense, and it, it's no shade to the Knights, though, but I think right now Columbus Grove is playing at a level that we have to start talking about Grove in this not – over the long term saying. with Marion right. Local, but it's in that same breath. Until somebody shows that they can slow them down, Columbus Grove's on their third quarterback, and they haven't missed a beat, right? Speaking of the quarterback, Danny, how impressed are you? Hopkins, second start, 8 of 12, 94 yards. He's a really good athlete. He is. He's a really good athlete. Yeah. Guys, the thing that impressed me most about this Grove team that I had two weeks ago, it look, when Kyle Hopkins got announced as the third quarterback to start for them, and the key – Everybody on the Alanis Mustangs was keying on Braza, and he goes for 300 yards. Fort Lormie last week, we're going to key on Braza. He still goes for 140 yards. When you game plan against a guy and he still puts up those unbelievable – and we and we laugh, 140, that's not a lot. That's a ton. That's yeah. a ton for a high school well, game. Yeah, yeah, not for him, but, yeah, for everybody <laughs> yeah, else. That's is. a lot of yards. So I don't think that Grove's going to have any problems. Here's, here's the only thing I worry about. I worry about Grove losing more key players to injuries before that big showdown with Bluffton because we're all so excited about that game, you know. I, I loved Hopkins in post game. They asked, you know, how tough was it to play quarterback? And he goes, it's easy when I hand it off to yeah. number three. So, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. He's yeah. a smart young man. Game number two, gentlemen, Wapakoneta at Elida. Randy Roberts on our own Miles Holiday. Wapakoneta comes in 7 0 overall, 6 0 in the WBL. Clearly the class of the league. Elida comes in 2 6 and 1 and 6 in the WBL. Guys, Elida can score some points. They can score some points. If Elida can get a lead in this game, any chance they can pull off the upset. The, the issue with Elida is that they are probably the most hot and cold team That's in, a great in, point. in the yeah. entire area right now. One week they look like they can play with absolutely anybody, and the next week it's like they just can't find their footing no matter how hard they try. What Elida team are we going to get on Friday night? We have to get the Elida team that has the offense that played against Bath a couple of weeks ago. But we also have to get the Elida defense that played against Salina. If those two teams can combine on the same night, yeah, they could they could do some damage. They have athletes. Amari Walsh is an outstanding dynamic player. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, you know, he finally didn't break one last week. You know, Defiance kept the ball out of his hands. They kept him quiet. I was told and, him not to not and, to kick to him. And, 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 <laughs> finally, and, someone listened. Yeah. And, and and look, Elida's offense couldn't get going. Ryan Magoo hasn't looked like the same quarterback that we thought he was last year. Um, if things start clicking for them, you know, we already talked with Parker and everything that he can do on the defensive side of things. It's not for a lack of talent. It's just putting it all together on the same night. I don't know that this will be the night that we see it, though. Well, I got a little bad news for Elida. You talked about Bath and their ability to score the football when they play Bath, right? Um, well, this Wapakoneta defense is hmm. number two in rush, <laughs> yeah. number one in passing. Um, they're only giving up 3.7 yards per rush. Brody Presser, 73 tackles, 65 tackles. Tackles for loss, or 6.5 tackles for loss, uh, 3.5 sacks. Here's how Elida has a chance, right? The best thing Magoo does, he can launch it a mile, can mm-hmm. he, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to throw deep eight times in this game. Amari Wash is going to run vertical all night long, get behind some secondary guys, do it early. You have to get a lead early if you're Elida. you got to get some go juice in your guys, some belief, because if you're trailing early in this game to Wapakoneta, watch out. Because Wapakoneta, as we know, they don't make mistakes. They don't turn the ball over. And I will say, Wapak, the last couple of weeks, they, they are a slow start team you know that game against Shawnee two weeks ago was only seven nothing at halftime late into the first quarter against Kenton this past week just seven nothing if they can get off to a quick start like you said Miles there's that chance and if all of a sudden Walpock's on their heels well you know hey 
teams start pressing. That's when we start oh, seeing yeah. mistakes. You know, you just never know. Yeah, belief is a big thing, right? I saw them against Salina a couple of weeks ago, and all of a sudden they were able to run the football because they had a chance to win that football game, and then they ran Magoo six straight times at the end to finish the, the game out. He is a huge dude, man. When they yep. run quarterback ISO, that is a lot coming at you. I think that's their formula. Throw deep, get a lead. Amari Wash has got to make splash plays like he can. That's their chance. Yep. I can't wait for the showdown between the house and Parker Krim, you know. The Louisville oh, Command. Right. Yeah, yeah, the Louisville Howard, Grand Hauser yeah. and Parker Krim going at it all night long will just be worth its price. Of I just admission. gave him a nickname, the house. We're calling him the house. Yeah, He's I, as I, big as a house. I, I didn't say it wasn't his nickname. <laughs> like, now what, we, is, what is going on we, tonight? I, we we I, can I, have that I, argument. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, yeah, who called him the house, house first? first. Right, right. We, yeah. we were actually talking bo- earlier today through text, and yeah. I said, hey, don't you think a great nickname for Grant Hauser will be I the remember house? That. You that remember that, right? And I text so Miles, it was me then. And I text Miles, and I said, let's start calling Nate Coco. <laughs> Remember Seinfeld? And he said T-Bone. <laughs> T-Bone. <laughs> All right, guys. Game number three, Mark Schein, Josiah Stober. They head down to cold water. New Bremen goes into cold water. New Bremen comes in four and three, two and three in the MAC. Cold water rolling along, 7-0 and overall, 5-0 and in the MAC. Cold water, unbelievable what they do year in and year out. This one on paper looks pretty rough, but hey, New Bremen still has good athletes. Well, everybody talks about uh, Balin Blockberger, and, he, and rightfully so. He's, he's, he's a tremendous yeah. quarterback, right? 16 TDs, only two interceptions, but the thing that always gets lost is how good Coldwater is every single year defensively. I mean, yeah. they are lights yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, easily one of the top lineback two teams uh, defensively every single year. Um, only 160 yards per game this year. Yeah, Only 160 yards. Now, bad news for New Bremen. Um, they only get 224 yards yeah. total every single yeah, game. Yeah. This is uh, has all the earmarks of a cold water runaway, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, the New Bremen defense is good, and they've had some really good games this year. They've had some lopsided ones, but it's been against you know Marion Local right, and right. teams that have been blown out everybody. But they haven't been able to score. I mean, th- that's just the issue with this Cardinals team. They average. Uh, 15 points a game, and they're going yeah. up against a cold water team that is only giving up nine a game. That is not a, a good recipe if you're trying to pull an upset. You're going against, like you said, a very prolific defense. Yeah. I don't see things changing this week. Nate, it's got to be uh, kind of disheartening also because they're a plus eight in the turnover margin. Usually, yeah. when you're a plus eight, yeah. you're scoring points because you're getting a short field, and, and they're not scoring points at all. Yeah. Guys, game four, Marion Local goes down to Anna. Patrick Kamler, Jack McGuire on the call. Marion Local comes in just rolling along, 7-0, 5-0 in the MAC. Uh, Anna, 5-2, 3-2 in the MAC. I think this is going to be a good game. I'm not calling for the upset. It's not not happening. But I still like Anna in this game, not to win, but to cover. (laughs) Yeah, you know, listen, I I love the optimism. And and if you're in the Anna Rockets, you got to find some in this one. You have a great quarterback in Alex Shappy. He is second second in the conference in passing. The problem is you're going against the top team in – passing defense this week against the Flyers. Do you know how many yards per game Marion Local is currently giving up through the air? Uh, <laughs> through the air, 80. 54. I was close, yeah. Okay. Zero passing teams. <clears throat> do, yeah. do you know how many yards a game total they give up on offense? Uh, we already said Coldwater, 160, okay? And they're second in the league. Marion okay, so it's, so it's less than uh, 160. Uh, 115. 99. Oh, I was 60. You're not even, you're, they're not even giving up 100 yards of offense a game. They're playing some bad teams. <laughs> <laughs> to make it worse, yeah, I mean, only 1.83 yards per carry. Yeah, I mean, I, the, and this isn't a Marion Local segment. That's next. Yeah. Uh, well, but I, well, I guess it is a Marion Local segment. It is I forgot another But listen, they, the Anna Rockets are having a good year. They seem to bounce back and found some footing. They were a little, yeah. you know, um, a little off early in the season. They've gotten things back going in the right direction, 5-2 and two overall. But, I mean, they're just going up against a team that a lot of people are – I, you know, we're starting to have conversations about is this the best team, not just out of Marion Local, but potentially that we've seen in the state in yeah, a awesome. very, very long time. Look, yeah. Anna's got a shot, and, I, and I'll tell you why. It, because they're a perimeter team. Mm-hmm. They're, they're not – we're lining up and we're going to beat A gap and B gap up and run off tackle. They, they get the ball into perimeter. Zach Osborne, 564 yards rushing. He also has 30 catches for 314 yards. Now, Shappy, a really good quarterback, but a lot of things that they do are, are sh- short passes like guys run. So if they can perimeter block and take advantage of Marion Local it, – it's tough to say, right? Take advantage of Marion Local no. secondary, a team that has given up zero <laughs> passing TDs and has 
10 interceptions. No. But if they can win that battle and, and play outside the hash marks, they'll have a shot. Um, and then defensively, if they can stop the run early and allow these two guys, Nolan Wilt and Noah Oftahauer, who have eight and six sacks apiece, take away to run early and then force those guys to get after the quarterback, they have a shot. Early. Are you calling it? No. <laughs> no. I'm just saying they got a shot. Yeah, yeah I mean, look, I, the way that it is, and I've said it a lot of times, and I, I mean no disrespect to any team no. that they play, but uh, they are they're right now in, in rarefied air. They are bearing down on the all-time – you know, consecutive win streak record in yeah, the state of Ohio. What, what's the total? 57, 56 or 57. I mean, they're only one or one game or so away yeah, from the record. The, the, uh, the cold water game that will be. I think the, that's the one that's they, the they, one they have beat to the get. record. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's the longest win streak in the country. All these things we've just talked about, all the things they do on defense. They're, they're averaging over 40 points a game on offense. There doesn't appear to be a weakness until somebody can show me some thing else there's no reason to do anything other than assume a marion local and, now this is why you yeah. play the game mm -hmm. but marion local right now has earned the benefit of the doubt that not a lot of teams have earned and when you watch them guys you, you watch them come out of the tunnel the, the, you're, you're not in awe it, it's amazing they're, they're not huge guys they just come out and they're just relentless in what they until do until the ball they snapped. don't make then mistakes you're in awe. Yeah. yeah oh absolutely yeah. you are yeah. no 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 uh, yeah they're they're just you we've never seen anything like this in ohio high school football yeah yeah i agree Game five, guys, myself and Darren Gilbert, we're going down to Minster. Versailles at Minster. Minster is 6-1, and 4-1 and one in the MAC. Versailles, 5-2, and 3-2. Two, and two. Guys, before I toss it to you, listen to this. So Versailles is just cruising along, right? They start the year out. They beat Milton Union 33-0. Fort Laramie, 41-0. St. John, 17-7. New Bremen, 18-17. Parkway, 37-12. And we're thinking, same over sales, same over sales. Guys, they got beat 48 to nothing by Marion Local. And then, not only that, a little bit of a hangover last week. They lose to Anna, which on paper, really, Versailles sh probably should have won that game. Th now, they're only giving up 13 points a game. But if you take that 48 points away, they're, they're less than 10 a game, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, but I think if you look at that schedule that, that you just went over, and yeah. I think the final, it, it, yeah. it, it was a little bit of smoke sure. and mirrors, it seemed like. Um, and, I, you know, there was... Some people, you know, I myself included, as you saw them, they, they were still playing really well, but you wondered if what you were seeing was real or not. And I feel like the last couple of weeks have kind of shown that. Exposed weak, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. They, they've yeah. got some weaknesses. And unfortunately, I don't think that that's going to change this week at all. Do you, Miles? No, I, I don't because uh, uh, Brogan Steffi, right? 100%. The guy is absolutely electric. I, I mean, dual he's, threat he's, as yeah. dual threat. He's as be. good an athlete as we have in, in, in Northwest Ohio. 100%. Yeah. He's a quarterback. That yeah, I've seen him play basketball. He's incredible. <laughs> he averages eight yards per carry at quarterback and has thrown for 1,359. Um, now, I don't know why they don't get the ball to height camp more. All he does is average 20 yards per catch. He's only caught it 24 times. Hey, throw it to him. He gets you 20 yards every single time. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, you're, you're top rushing offense, top passing offense. Mm -hmm. You have the le leading rusher in the MAC in Brogan Steffi. Um, you have to – and it's not like it's, oh, he's a dual threat quarterback and he's got – 300 yards rushing and 900 yards passing. I mean, the, the guy's got over 1,000 on each side. Or, right. I mean, he is prolific. You have to account for him. It causes a bunch of nightmares. And there's only really been one team that's been able to slow him down, and that was Coldwater. Yeah. And even that and game came right down game. to it. Yeah. And, and I, I don't think Versailles is going to be able to slow him down. No, I, think, yeah. I think Minster rolls in this oh, one. Oh, by the way, guys, if you hold their offense down, which averages 26 a game, their defense only gives up 11 a game. So. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Now, all coaches, when they're in a, a uh, interview situation, they say, well, tell us about what you want to be like uh, offensively, coach. And they always say, well, we want to be balanced, right? It, it, it's never the case, right? They're one no. side, you either run the ball for more yards or throw the ball for more yards, except for at Minster. Did you see their numbers? It's unbelievable. 1578 rush, 1369 pass. Yep. That is extremely balanced. Yep. That is crazy balanced. I don't know if I've ever seen more balance ever. Well, and if you're for sales, right, you're going to say, okay, what's our path to victory here? And, and the one weakness that this Minster team has is their passing defense. They rank last in the MAC in passing defense. They're giving up over 200 yards throughout the year. Okay, well, let's do that. Versailles, 
only averaging just over 90 yards right. in the air a game. Mm-hmm. So the one weakness that Minster has is a, the weakness on the offense for the Tigers. It's not a good Now, I'm going down to Minster, and I don't know if you guys have seen him play yet. We got these stats in front of us. What I want to know is, is that last in the MAC because they can't get a pass rush or their corners not doing the job? What, what's, what, what's, the, what's going on? It's yeah. usually a little column A, a little yeah. column B. B. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, now, why give a couple uh, big hugs and love to James Schnippmeyer, 52 tackles, and Nick Nick Ellis, 39 tackles for Versailles. Those guys are really tough. Absolutely. All right, guys, I love this segment five that uh, Miles put on the sheet for this week. Uh, nominees for players of the year in the area that we cover. Here's what we'll do, Miles. Why don't you just go ahead? We'll start with each category. We'll go around. We'll give our uh, recipients, and then we'll just go down the line. Oh, okay. It, just like one or give yeah, them all? Give one. Give yeah. one. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Well, this is going to shock you guys. Yeah. Okay. There's a little running back in Columbus Grove. <laughs> <laughs> he wears number well, three. Well, let, let me mark him off of my list. It's like fantasy football, right? Yeah. Turn it. He drafted yeah. Trent Barraza. Trent Barraza, fellas. Um, so the theme throughout my list is I said, man, I've seen a lot of Western Buckeye League teams this year. Um, and it kind of influenced mine. So I wanted to think of other people that I had seen this year besides Western Buckeye League teams. We talked about Caleb Moore. I strongly considered him. He's been playing much better. But then you, how you go anywhere other than – Bug Wilson with Lima Senior. Oh, great, he's, great, he, yeah. he's 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 the one of the top, if not still number one in receiving in the entire country. He, he's been absolutely prolific. He's my offensive player of the year so far. Awesome. Uh, again, I <laughs> I struggled with this one too. I love Trenton Barraza. He is who I picked. I also thought, and Miles and I talked about earlier this week, Tavian St. Clair. But uh, this is going to sound oh, goofy. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Weird. How? Right. Oh yeah. Danny. Well, Danny I, likes Tavian St. Clair. This is new information to all of us. I saw him I as am, a freshman. I cannot believe this. Can I you? Hate you guys. But <laughs> here's the thing. This is my. This is the way my mind works. I'm thinking. Wait a minute. Tavian David St. Clair is going to be the player of the year in the country. Let's give it to Trent Barraza, right? We can't give we can't give uh, Tavian everything. So Trent Barraza for small school football in the state of Ohio, he's a stud. He's a beast. He's my guy. Uh, some some other. Did you have any other names? Also? I did. So okay. I, I already mentioned Caleb Moyer. Right. Uh, I had Trent Barraza not, uh, down, and actually I had Brogan Steffi written down as yeah, well. Absolutely. Uh, you know, How could you not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, with what he's been able to do on both sides of the ball, it, he was definitely in consideration. Right. I have uh, – uh, did, did you have more, Danny? I, no, just did those two. Okay. Those were my um, two finalists. Seth Elkert, the unbelievable receiver. Good. And yep. Liberty Benton. Yep. Uh, Mikey Hale. Uh, have, yeah, we have a great Bath, year. Bath, fantastic. Zach Osborne, mm-hmm. uh, 16 touchdowns at Anna. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they pull off that upset this week, watch out. It could mm-hmm. be on your card. And then you, you talked about the WBL. I, I would argue nobody's had a better year running the football than Anthony Wilder yep. at Defiance. You're, you're right. Really good. Phenomenal yeah. year up there. All right, uh, let's go to you, Nate, for Defensive Player of the Year. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Parker Krim, baby! Oh! Take him off your list! Wait, I got him! <laughs> <laughs> you didn't call him the Krim Reaper. <laughs> and don't you dare. <laughs> well, I mean, it is the nickname I gave him. <laughs> I thought it was the house. Like house. <laughs> I thought it was the house. House mouse. Uh, yeah, listen, there, there were a couple of different guys that, that I thought of, especially on um, that defensive line. And, I mean, look, 15 tackles for loss. Eight sacks this year. Yeah. Teams have been double teaming him every chance they get. They scheme away from him. I don't know of any other defensive player in recent memory that has been so impactful without the ball in their hands than Parker has been. Yeah. The, the real impressive thing is for a defensive lineman, and he's 77 tackles. Yeah. So that means he's just not, oh, I got my gap, coach. Right. No, or I'm getting double teamed and I'm off the play. Like, he is finding ways to still be impactful. He is pitter-pattering yes. his way to the football. Do we even have to give? Because that's, that's he was number one on my board. It wasn't even close. I, I have some other nominees. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Gavin Braza at uh, yep. Columbus Grove. Yep. Fantastic. Um, Kalen Mays. Um, He's stud. He is an absolute stud. You cannot yeah. get leverage on him at all. Um, he even has an interception. Remember that? Yeah. That interception yeah. was amazing. Yep. And then uh, Zach Elkert, the unbelievable linebacker at uh, Liberty mm-hmm. Benton, who I yeah. think is averaging like 15 tackles a game. Yeah, mm-hmm. So, th- and I had a couple other ones that I thought of. Wyatt Buell, the defensive lineman from Walpaw, he's having a, a great year. He yeah. spent, I'm pretty sure, the entire game last week in the backfield as they just completely <laughs> just wrecked Corbin Johnson. And, I mean, it was sack after sack, and he was involved. And I think four of them is what. I was told last week. Wow. Yeah, he he was an absolute. You know, he's been great for I'm them all year. To see him Friday. And then you know you talk about Barraza from Columbus Grove when he's in the secondary. Well, uh, 
he's tied for first in the conference with those interceptions. Right. Michael Quaman of LCC is having a phenomenal year in the secondary over there as well. He just had two interceptions his last game. You know, a, another good player in the area if as well. Michael, if he wasn't hurt this year, he could have been. You well, know, you're thinking yeah. of Matthew. Or Matthew. Matthew. Matthew's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma- right. Matthew's yeah, yeah, his yeah. older brother. Sorry, My, Michael's right. yeah. younger brother, don't, just a sophomore, he's four good. interceptions. Yeah. You know, he, he he plays undersized, but he does a great yeah. job for him. Where does that corner. speed come from in the Quatman family? It's got to be mom was fast or something. I, right. That's where I'm going. Oh, with. I mean, yeah, from right. my from my knowledge of yeah. that family, it's yeah. it's definitely right. dad's not for athlete. sure. No. <laughs> All right, guys. Special teams player of the year. I'll go first. Ah, wash, rinse, repeat. Ah. Wash, rinse, repeat. Amari <laughs> Wash. Do not <laughs> kick it. Do not. The man is averaging 33 yards every time he catches the ball. He's the best special teams player in the area. Take him off your board. <laughs> That I, mean, is I, don't my even, board. I don't even have anybody. <laughs> that is my board. I had no one no here. Nobody I had no, else. I had no, because it was just such a slam dunk. That was the along, easiest one to yeah, pick all week. Because he he leads the Western Buckeye League in all-purpose yards. He, every time he touches the ball, he's electric. He, kickoffs have been. I mean, the, he puts them back into play. Right. Yeah. Usually, we watch kickoffs and they're ho hum and they go through. And you know, I. I'll only throw it out there because I get to see him every single week and be able to watch him come back from a, a severe injury against Salina. But Jalen Bagley of Shawnee yeah, has good. had yeah. several very long electric runs that given the Indians some short field. He's done a nice job for them re- returning kicks. But really, it starts and ends with Amari Wash. Right? It does. Uh, another name, he's had a really good year returning the football. Braden Pullman for uh, Delphi St. John's. 29 yards every time he uh, has a kickoff return and might be the best thing that they Which, have right and I don't mean this in a negative way, but he's gotten a lot of kickoffs. It's not exactly. like it's not like he got 29 yards so on three. He's had the ball kicked to him right. a lot this so you year. Would, you'd think that that number would dwindle, right? right? Yeah, so that shows you how prolific he is. Amari Wash could start for the Browns, I'm just saying right now. <laughs> he could. Uh, he could. You, <laughs> you could start for the Browns right I may, now. I may go up there next week. <laughs> All right, Miles, Coach of the Year. Yeah, I think this one is an easy selection because there's only one quarter, one coach who's had to play multiple quarterbacks and has continued to uh, win games and win games in a big way, and that's Andy Schaefer at Columbus Grove. Yeah, did, cool. did you guys next, have that? Next did you guys have that? I got a different guy. That? I I had, different yeah, I had no. coach for a, literally the exact same reason. No, he's a, on his third quarterback. Great minds, great he, he's on his third quarterback. He's had to deal with a lot. You come into the season, you're like, oh, we got Trent Barraza. You know, we, we have all these things, and, you know, we got experience at the quarterback position. And then immediately, almost every week, he's having to shuffle things on his offense. And what has it done? Absolutely nothing. Nope. He has figured it out. He's put guys in the right spot. They've been prepared week in and week out. They continue to win and they win big going away. He, he's my choice for Coach of the Year Plus, as well. He's, he's our guest next uh, Wednesday. So Yeah, well, and look, I think he's – Trent Brazza's here too. Yeah, yeah, I think he's a great coach, but unfortunately you guys are wrong. I'm going to tell you who the Coach of the Year is, and I'm going to tell you why oh, he's the Coach of the Year. Oh, wise man, Last tell us. Year, yes, thank you. I'm one of the three wise men. Last year, his team was 1-9. and nine. This year, he's got them playing good football. They just did a shutout against Bath last week. Ken Schreiner, Ottawa Glandorf. Yeah. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Okay, well, last week <laughs> – last week they lost to Van. Oh, that's right. Week before yeah. they even yeah. yeah that. So yeah. I would have, I would been, yeah. I've been saying, yeah, that's it. a good choice. Dang it, that's a good choice. But I, yeah. I saw him lose. Yeah, and, and you know what, you would, you do have to give Coach Reiner a lot of credit though, because you're right, one and nine. To me, what's been most impressive about that OG team, though, is the defensive schemes that they've been able to put in week out. That's the best defensive team in the entire conference right now. Exactly. And, statistically. And statistically. Yeah. I mean, they are shutting teams down yard, yards per game-wise. And, you know, they, they did. They, we saw them do them against St. Mary's and do a lot of other different things. So he's definitely in consideration, but you're wrong, and we're right. It's Coach Schaefer. Uh, I, I will say this to, to support you. Um, Briston Weiss, I talked to him after the game last week, the quarterback for Van yeah. Wert, and he said they knew every single play we were running. Connor's he guys. said they were calling. That's yeah. what. That's what I thought. He said they were calling out before we ran it. So that tells you how well schooled those, o, those OG uh, defenders yeah. are. All right, uh, Nate, tough dude of the year. So once again, I'm I'm staying in the Western Buckeye League. Oh and, wow, shocker! And yeah, I'm kid going. Plays there, you go to every game. Yeah, wow. You know what? It's Michael Garlock. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and I, I love you, son, but it ain't. Um, <laughs> It's uh, it's Brett Zetfeld. What he's done up in, in and and I went when you went with tough dude of the year. You know, I was thinking of a lot of different ways to go with this. You know, and Brez 
coming into this season, this Defiance team had a lot of expectations on them. Um, I thought that they would be able to challenge for the WBL. They still can. They're only one loss behind Walpock. But then he got that knee injury right away. Yeah. And he couldn't play. You know, they lose that week one to, to Napoleon. You're wondering what's going on. He was back out there week two. Uh, mobility was very much hindered. He had, the, I believe it was a sprained MCL. I had heard a lot of things leading up to that, that it was torn. He was going to be out for the year. You can tell that he's still not the quarterback that we saw last year, but he is toughening that out. And to add to that, last week through for his 43rd touchdown, school record. So he's doing all of this. He's setting records, still throwing touchdowns. Really you know, good. yeah, he, he is doing a fantastic job, and he's doing it hindered with that knee injury. Might have been a blessing in disguise, right? Because he gets hurt, so then they have to run the football a little bit more. Exactly. Yep. And you find out, well, hey. Because that, that was what they were worried about, right? Are we going right. to be able to run the ball with Brogan Castillo gone? Right. They, they can. Yeah, Wilder so. is picked up, yep. and, and they're going for a win six in a row. Yep. Right, which would be the first time since like the mid '90s that they oh, won it was six in a row. Oh seven, oh eight, oh, yeah, and it, okay. but it skipped like so. It was like the end of 07 into oh, 08, 08 okay. regular season win streak. Yeah. Six in a row during yeah. the regular season. Yeah, that, that, that's great. Uh, this tells you the great job Travis Cooper has done there. Yeah, at, at Defiance, he's done a really good job. How many do you have for your tough dude? Just one. You just have one. Just one. Oh, okay, Nate, do you have more? I don't. That was who okay. I had. Yep. Um, Brez Zeffel, great, great one. I, I like that one. Um, I, I have four. So. Do you want me to go, then you go, and then I'll tell you the rest yeah, of my list? Yeah, you go, and then a half hour later okay. I'll go. Uh, yeah. Scrap Iron Vinny Brinkman, right? Yeah. Yeah, half hour. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Did it, you name him Scrap Iron? I, I, <laughs> I, I think I was because I had texted Nate earlier today and said, you, "Hey, did you hear about Scrap Iron?" I, I wasn't going to say anything, yeah. but yeah, he did. <laughs> oh, well, you're, you're the one that I'm named uh, Vinny Vendetta Vendetta too, right? <laughs> like, is that you? Yeah. <laughs> Scrap Iron Vinny Brinkman. He, he leads the the charge. He goes in motion as the H back for OG, and you know where the ball is going to go, and it doesn't matter because he's going to lock on guys. He's just a tough guy, and when you talk to him, he could care less if he gets more than two carries a game as the H back. He just loves hitting people, so. That's that's my tough guy because he loves contact. Almost like, hey, that's what football used to be, right? A contact sport. And mm-hmm. Scrap Iron, he likes it. Yeah. I, I, I got Andrew Miller from Pandora Go yeah. We Miles and I had him week one, and Grove was just housing these guys. I mean, it was it was out of control. And this cat was running like he was on fire, and he just loves contact. I said to Miles, he reminds me of Mike Allstott. Just get in my way, and I'm going to beat you to death. <laughs> and he is he is their offense right now. They, they got a nice team, Pandora does. But yeah. he runs so hard. I felt so bad for him against Grove. I mean, those Grove defenders were knocking him back, and he never let up. I love that kid. I love the style. I love the way they use him. And you can tell he loves football. Andrew Miller, Pandora Gold. He's a tough dude, man. I like that one. Uh, uh, two more that I have. Jack Raider, the number 99 defensive lineman. Oh, we call him Oakland. <laughs> From <laughs> Bath. Uh, he is a yeah. tough guy. Uh, takes on a lot of double teams. He's really tough. And then Landon Houston, uh, the middle oh. linebacker for Columbus Grove. There's no problems here, Houston. <laughs> he, he is a throwback, isn't he? Like, yeah. you expect him to have the, the pads on the forearms, the, the, the neck roll, the cowboy <laughs> collar. The roll. And, he, and he's just staring. <laughs> at a gap saying run the fullback <laughs> right at me man he is a tough dude uh these are a lot of fun um let's revisit at the end of the season and, yeah. and give out actual awards what do you guys Absolutely. think i like it Absolutely. yeah all right. all right guys it's time for our buckeye chatter the good the bad the buckeye let's do this miles you give the, your good your bad your buckeye and your prediction for the game okay uh all, all in a row yeah okay the good that offensive line uh, boy, so much maligned coming into the season, right, even after week one. But they were absolutely fantastic. And Iowa team, everybody told us, you can't run the ball on Iowa. No, you cannot it's run impossible. the ball. It's no, impossible. no. 200 yards rushing. And they kept uh, your favorite quarterback, Nate, they kept him clean in that pocket. <laughs> that offensive line that is That doesn't good. help your argument when it comes to me, just Will FYI. The, thrill. the bad. Ryan Day, impatient. We're, we're seven nothing, right? You know this is an Iowa team that's not going to score a lot of points, and at Brown Midfield in the second quarter, we're on fourth and two. We're going to run the football and get stopped. Punt the football there. Yeah. I was not going ninety. No, right? Are, are, you, right? are you talking about the fourth down try where, two, where we Will ran Howard. Will Howard right. up the middle and right. Will Howard failed right. to that pick was up? Offensive line where the Will Howard yeah. didn't do what he the uh, Will Howard part. You talking about uh, Will uh, Howard Will when Howard. he paired? Right. Yeah. Ryan Day okay. looks like Eddie Munster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried that Ryan Day is going to be impatient when he shouldn't be in a, in a big game, 
right? And, and he's going to forget, my defense is really good. Punt the football. It's okay to punt the football. He, he, he needs to have like a Jim Trussell doll on the sideline to remind him, the punt is okay. Jim, now, punt but but, but now, do you think, though, that he's a little bit more aggressive on those because he knows his defense is so good? And it's if we don't get it, it's okay no, I, because my defense will hold him? I, I like that. That's a good thought. But not around midfield. When you have an offense challenge team, that you're going to give him the short field. If you're playing an explosive team, yeah, maybe See, think, that's the case. I think he's trying to build confidence in the offensive line. He's saying, hey, guys, I believe in you. If we can maybe get maybe he's trying guys, to build confidence in Will Howard. There's no need to. Are you sure? He's already confident okay. enough. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Nate. The Buckeye is Sonny Styles. Um, we've been waiting for him to show up. He showed he said, up in a did. big way. Um, that was an Iowa team. Everybody said they're going to run the football on the Ohio State. He shot gaps. He got off blocks. He made tackles. He was fantastic. Miles, I don't, I don't think with Sonny Styles, and I think you guys agree with me, I don't think it's athleticism or knowing how to play the game. I think it's learning the new position. I really oh, do. Absolutely. I think th- I don't think we give people enough credit when they make those switches. And, and Ryan Day and Jim Knowles said, look, it's going to take some time. He's super athletic. I mean, everybody in the country wanted him. And now, look, he's, he's really good. If you want to find a stat that shows how good defenders are and how good defenses are, look at missed tackles. Now, think about that game against Iowa. Can you remember any missed tackles? No. And you, do you know who has zero missed tackles this year? Who's that? Will Howard. Will. <laughs> <laughs> it shows you how good he is at I quarterback. Know, I know. No, but this, is, this might be the best tackling Ohio State defense. I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah. It, they're continuously under four or five missed tackles, and that, that's a great indicator because that means they're not getting extra yards. Yeah. We quit, we quit doing what we've done so many times in the last couple of years. And I'm talking about angles, taking the right angle. How many times over the last two or three years do we see guys not taking the right angle? Why does always got to be? Why year? is always got to be a right angle though? Sometimes those are two angles, and acute ones can work pretty well too. <laughs> well, some I mean, of, you just got to know them, the right one to do. Some of them are acute, and some of them are ugly. <laughs> like I, I, I never got out of rudimentary math. So, yeah. <laughs> what is your prediction for the game? Uh, pain, <laughs> pain for the Ducks. Um, I, whack, I think whack. I think Ohio State. I've been saying this since uh, midsummer. Ohio State wins this one easily by two touchdowns or more. I have full confidence that this is a Oregon team that gave up 221 yards rushing against uh, Boise State. Um, this is a Oregon team that likes to throw short. I think Ohio State knows this. They're going to roll up and play some man press early. If Ohio State gets their hands on passes, which they do all the they time, do. they're, they're going to make life really difficult for Dylan Gabriel. I like Ohio State to do this thing to come out to start the football game. Don't be surprised if Chip Kelly says, we're going to go warp speed. Hey, remember that? He did that at Oregon, right? Yeah. Let's break it out to take away that the, the, the crazy outs in stadium I've heard so much about, right? Get that crowd noise quieted by going warp speed early. You have four or five plays pre-scripted. These are our plays to start the game. Go boom, boom, boom. Get everything quiet. I, I don't have a problem with Ohio State winning this one easy. All right. So... No Will Howard talk. <laughs> That's my own personal segment at this point. <laughs> All right, so for me, the good is the receiving core. And um, the, 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 what those receivers did and what they were able to do, I mean, not just Jeremiah Smith and his one-handed grab and, and all the excitement that he, he brings to it. It's the stability of the other guys and being able to, to be somebody and be reliable, especially with a quarterback like Will Howard. We need reliable <laughs> wide receivers, okay? And they're doing a good job. And I'm going to talk, when I get to my the Buckeye, I'm going to talk more about it, but I don't think it's going to be who you guys think it okay. is for in, in the receiving court. Nate, look, real quick on the <clears throat> Jeremiah Smith one-handed catch. What did you like more, the one-handed catch or the get off me stiff arm that the he get gave off the guy? Me stiff that arm. was awesome, yeah. wasn't Without it? Without a doubt. Yeah. Because he's not just finesse. It's he did he's not doing the one-handed grabs to be a look at me. It's that's what I have to do. Yep. And then I'm a football player, yep. and that's what I like most about what, what he's able to do. And again, he's a freshman. So it's incredible. Um for me, the bad is that first half offense, right? That that first half offense. You know, I, I know we, we joke a lot of tongue in cheek about Will Howard and things like that, but he just in, g- in general, this offense has to be more explosive. You can't come out. I know Iowa has a tough defense, but seven nothing against that Iowa team after two quarters of play is just unacceptable. Now, I love that coming out of halftime, we made adjustments because a year ago we weren't making those adjustments, right? We were going to see more of the same brutal stuff. Right. This year, that's a good sign that we're dealing with a different Ohio State team. So I was excited to see that. And once that got going, the floodgates came open and it became a runaway. Um, my V Buckeye is Mbuka. He 
he doesn't need the flash. You need that senior stability and that leadership, He's and that's solid. what he had. Nine He's catches, solid. 77 yards, not 200. Nine ca- that means that he is the check down, dump down consistency that Will Howard needs. He gets the yards. He had three touchdowns. He is what Ohio State needs. He's finally came alive over the last three weeks, and, and I think that it's going to be big that he continues to be a focal point uh, in that safety valve so they can go over the top mm-hmm. to Jeremiah, right? They, they need somebody underneath that everybody has to worry about in order to not have to send three guys with Jeremiah all the time. That's going to make this offense more dynamic. However, if Will Howard throws another interception. Three, uh, three weeks in a row. Three weeks in a row we've had an interception. I whatever this isn't the guy yeah i know we keep talking it week in a week out it wasn't even a good interception miles no no, no it was, was an ugly throw. interception really throw, right? when when is one of right. I, i'm i'm very concerned that eventually one of these interceptions is going to be when we need him to be at his In best and you know you can get away with this stuff early but you can't late and it's starting to become a habit mm-hmm. And as much as I joke around about Will Howard, there are still some legitimate concerns. If you were a defensive coordinator and you're looking at the Ohio State offense, who's the one guy you'd say, I'm going to make him beat us? Well, Howard. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, right. Without right. A doubt. Can but he beat? Can he beat us with his with his run game? Can he beat us continuously throwing the football forty times a game? Yes. That is, you we, think so? I, I've seen it. Okay. He did it last year at Kansas State. They went to the Big Twelve Championship. And he game. was so good. Kansas State brought another quarterback in to replace him. He that, that he, he was so valuable. He, he threw twenty eight. T- he wasn't going to be repl- I, that narrative is so worn out. People keep saying that they that kid that kid is going to so be a good quarterback. That kid's going to be a good quarterback. He gets fired up. He gets so he does. Give me a prediction. Hey, All right. So listen for my prediction. Right. I want to. I'm going to give you guys a blind resume. Okay. Ooh. And this isn't a trick question. Okay. It may. It may. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. It's okay. So, so so blind resume. And you tell me which team, if you heard these numbers, that you would think can you start would tomorrow? win this one. <laughs> All right. Team A. Your quarterback, 1,449 yards, 11 touchdowns, three interceptions. You have 552 yards rushing and five touchdowns out of your running back position. And your number one receiver, uh, 400 yards, five touchdowns. Okay? Mm -hmm. Team B, 1,248 yards uh, passing, 12 touchdowns, three interceptions. Your running back, 468 yards, five TDs. And your number one receiver, 450 yards and six touchdowns. Team A or Numbers. Team B? If you lift up the A, does it say Pepsi? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty even numbers. Pretty even numbers. Pretty even numbers. So if you had to pick one of those teams and you were like, all right, this is the team that I would give the edge going into this weekend, uh, which one would you take, A or B? Going into this weekend, I like yep. the 12 touchdown passes. Okay. Over the 11 touchdown yes. passes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to guess that's Dylan Gabriel, right? Yeah. Is the 12 touchdowns? Yeah. Like, yeah. So you guys, the Team A is Ohio State. Yeah. Will Howard, 1,200 yards passing, 12 touchdowns, three interceptions. Dylan yeah. Gabriel, 1,400 yards passing, 11 touchdowns, three interceptions. Wow. The, the, rush, the running game actually favors Oregon for the, your lead back. The difference is Ohio State has two guys, right, right. who are really getting things right. done for them, and are, we have the better number one. Now, if you look at the last three games out of both of these teams, there is one common opponent, and that's Michigan State. Ohio State last three games, 49-14, 38-7, 35-7. Oregon, 49-14, 34-13, 31-10. They both played Michigan State. Michigan State game for Ohio State, 38-7. Michigan State game for Oregon, 31-10. These are two – if you take away the first two weeks of the season – where Oregon looked, I don't even know what was going on with Oregon. Barely beat Boise State. They, they have figured it out over the last couple of weeks. This is a team that matches up very well with Ohio State, at least on paper. Sure. And c- can do some things and have a dynamic quarterback. We, I think defensively we have the edge. I don't think it's going to be a runaway. I do think Ohio State gets the win. I'm going 34-27 Buckeyes. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, first one to 30, right? Yeah. Uh, and how does, how does Oregon get the 30? Do you think they can against Ohio State? You know, the one thing that you got to give the Buckeyes credit for right now, and it's hard to say because I know we, we try not to look at this through rose-colored glasses as Buckeye fans, right? Not Danny. Well, yeah, not no, Danny. He I'm, has the I'm scarlet biased. and gray glasses on for sure. I hate everyone. <laughs> but but you, they haven't really been tested yet, guys. We haven't faced an offense that we'd be like, ooh, that's a dangerous offense, and we shut them down. Their are offenses that haven't scored a lot anyway. We're facing an offense now that's going – that knows how to score and can Kate score McNamara. and, and are, yeah. and are going to be able to do some things. It's, I, 
I don't know is the, I guess the best answer I have for you. I don't know how He's they worried. score 30, but I do think that it's, a, I, I do think that everybody's been right when they said Oregon is the team to be the most scared of on this schedule. I think that that kind of got quieted after how Oregon started the season. And I think we should be worried again. I don't think Ohio State loses, but I do think that it's going to be a game that we're all not going to be watching in the fourth quarter going, we're fine. No worries. He, here's what I'll say. The Michigan State comparison, Michigan State had to go to Oregon. Ohio State played at Michigan State. I, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter where you play at in the Big Town, a Saturday night road game at night oh, is a yeah. big yeah. win. Yeah, and that right. was a yeah. big win for the Buckeyes. And here, the other thing, too, is it was a – it, could, it might as well have been a shutout. They, they scored a, a, a stupid touchdown, but it was 31-7, right? I think it was 38-7, Buckeyes win. Over uh, Michigan, Michigan State, State yeah, 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 38 yeah. So, so that, that point right there made me go, wow. And what I've seen out of this offensive line the last couple of weeks, I'm really, really excited. So let me go over mine real quick. Um, and real, real quick, Dan. Yeah. You, you brought up playing a Saturday night game in the Big yeah. Ten, right? Yeah. Purdue. Remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was one that Ohio State should just roll, run away with. Mm, so, yeah, that. you're yeah. right about the Big Ten yeah. on Saturday night. Um, so, I, I don't know, Nate, if I, if I cheated off you, or it's almost a mirror image of what I've got. My, uh, my good is the combination of Obeka and Smith. I, I don't think there's a better combination in the country. I don't. And I know I'm looking through Rose Color. Those I, two but guys, I don't think you are. I think you no, just watch two, the games. Yeah, it's pretty they're obvious. They're phenomenal, and I love Omeka. I, I think when you talk about student athletes, the guy has done everything at Ohio mm -hmm. State we've asked him to do. Yeah. He came in as the number one receiver. He hasn't disappointed. He waited his turn. He never complained. He was behind Jackson Smith and Jibbit. He was behind Marvin Harrison. He was behind some great NFL receivers. And what did he do? He just showed up He's every day. He's a nasty day. blocker. He's too. a nasty blocker. I love the kid. I that, wish. Well, listen, I think the biggest thing you just said is he doesn't complain he's waited his turn yeah. he came back when he didn't have to come back when he would have potentially been a day one draft pick he comes back and what is what's happened he's taking a back seat to a freshman yeah. Yeah. and all he does he doesn't complain he's not out on social he's not tweeting things or putting stuff on x or throwing stuff out on instagram he shows up every day he didn't try to transfer he's not sitting out he's just coming to work he's letting jeremiah do his thing he all he cares about is winning and he's, getting an at he's going to be a number one draft pick for somebody he's going to be a top 100%. 15 yep. pick and and fellas here's the incredible part Word out of Columbus is Brandon Ennis and Carnell Tate are going to be maybe better than him physically at the receiver position. Now, teammates, I, I don't think you get better than him. You know what he's done. But the depth is incredible. You remember last year he hurt his foot yeah. and, and, and missed a couple weeks yeah. and probably should have set out the rest of the year but came back and played at yeah. about 90% maybe. Yeah. Um, the touchdown uh, Saturday when it went by the defensive back's ear, yeah, mm -hmm. that front, great throw by Will Howard, by the way. It was. But he shows late hands to, to make that catch. Yeah. I mean, that was a tough yeah. – you know how tough it is to catch a football that going by a defensive back's helmet yeah. at the same time? Now, my bad. Get ready, Nate. You're going to smile about this. I'm going to say the same thing you did. We've had three interceptions the last three weeks. Two things are going to happen this year. I can just mark it down, write it down, put it on your podcast. I'm writing it. I'm Two writing things it. are going to happen. Will Howard is going to win a game for us because he runs the ball and has to beat teams with his legs. And here's the other thing that's going to happen, and get ready, fellas. He's going to have a horrible game. Somewhere along the line, Will Howard is going to throw two picks and a fumble and be really distraught, and our defense or our running game is going to have to win it. But that's okay because Will Howard is a winner, and I'm, I'm confident in Will Howard. I it is an absolute upgrade from what we had last year. Agreed. In every facet. And I, Kyle McCord is having a great year. But it's Syracuse, Sorry. guys. It's unfortunately, Syracuse. Kyle McCord starting yeah, to show who Kyle McCord Syracuse. is. Unfortunately, so, up in so Syracuse. that's my bad. But Did you I, see the potato chip deal he got? Yeah, I saw uh, that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, pretty, I saw that. Good for but Kyle. that's my bad. But I'm okay. And the uh, Buckeye right now, guys, we waited, and I'm telling you, Caleb Downs is an absolute oh, yeah, animal. Yeah, yeah. Him and Sonny. The reason I'm so confident going into Saturday is. I don't know who gets by Caleb Downs right now in the open field. I've never seen, we've not seen a safety with this physical ability, uh, maybe since Damon Moore. And Damon Moore was really good. Mm. Uh, Damon uh, couldn't run like him. No, 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 no. no. no he's, uh, he's Michael Doss with speed. Mike Doss. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I can name a few other safeties, but this kid is, we, he's a freak. We've never seen anything. And, and Styles is getting better and he's getting better. I'm, I got the Buckeyes winning this one 28-17, but I'm not going to be surprised if it's 42-17. Uh, the D-line's got to come to play. We, we gotta, I, we, I don't disagree we, with that. We, we, no. The def Tyler defensive Williams line there. has to has to step up. We need more production out of Sawyer and JT on the edges. That's I've been a talking point for, uh, for a while. Like yeah. though, I think that 
the, that front is going to be the difference in this game. You brought up Damon Moore. I was a young coach at Bedford High School mm -hmm. in Michigan. When we were in the old GLL. Our special teams coach said, you know, Damon Moore, he's not that good. Let's kick to him. <laughs> He, he, that he, guy, he, that he, guy would kick to Amari Walsh. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, surprise, surprise. To? Damon Moore ran it back. Yeah. Wow, there's a shocker. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time for our Power 5 football teams in Northwest Ohio. Miles, take it away. Yeah, pretty easy, isn't it? Um, uh, you got um, Coldwater Volleyball, now 21-0. <laughs> They're on fire. Mark Shine would love you. <laughs> they have only given uh, lost one set. One set all year long. How insane is that's, that? Uh, that's good, yeah. I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. They play yeah. Russia next week. <laughs> <laughs> so Coldwater, um, unbelievable in football and volleyball. Uh, Wapak, uh, Marion Local, Bluffton and Grove. I, I, I think uh, we're all going to be kind of close yeah. in that, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, that's the thing about, you know, the, this part and this segment, we get to this part of the year. Teams are starting to separate themselves, and it's getting hard to, you know, justify when we talk about who's – playing the best right now these guys are been doing it all year long my, my five mary local grove wapak coldwater bluffton I, the, they have all stood out they continue they don't they're not even playing close games at this point yeah. um they're dominating teams they're easily the top five in this area at least in my eyes Marion local coldwater grove bluffton wapak yeah. guys same yeah. thing uh before we go guys i want to bring this up and it's not on the show sheet but i want to get your opinion on something and i think it's a valid topic and it is a controversial topic but i want to get your opinions all right so and and, and know that there's a lot of people that listen to this, and, and some people will not agree with this. So I had the Lima Senior Toledo Rogers game last week, okay? okay. I know what Lima Senior does. I, yeah. I know what they do. But I want to get your opinion on they onside kicked every time. Sure. Yeah. Every time, okay? Yeah, we have and it's, and it, Yes, yep. and it's what they do. Mm -hmm. It was 38-6 to six with three minutes to go, and they did another onside kick. I just want to get your opinion on that because part of me says it's what they do. It's the Houston Cougar offense. Remember they'd throw in every down. Oh, you know? sure, it's sure. what they David did. It, yeah. yeah. But is there, is there a point where let's just squib kick it. Let, let's just get it down the field. I just want your opinions. I, I don't, I don't think Bill's doing anything wrong, but part of me goes, it's 38, six. There's three minutes to go. If you get the ball, so you're to kick it out of bounds. Right. I, I don't, but I don't so, even know I mean, if you tell your kid that. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I guess I can see it from two ways. Is, yeah. You know, that's there, what there's, there's, a, there's a competitive side of this where I think all of us have been around sports and coaches, and you go, okay, at a certain point, you know, we're like, all right, we're going to, you're going to stop yeah, the bleeding. Right. And we're just going to get out of here and it, it'll be what it is. But, you know, there's also the side of it where you're, when you're talking about a play like an onside kick, where it's. And by the way, they're really good at where it. Where really and, and it, it. it is. I mean, it's not yeah. like it's a surprise. That's a that's a part of your offense yeah. at this point, right? Trying to get short fields and, and score quickly and do all these things. You know, there's something to be said that the more times that you are able to work on this and practice this mm -hmm. and put this into to motion and into use, the better you get at it when it counts and when it matters. And if you look at it from that side of it, I don't have a problem with it because at the end of the day, we're not doing this to embarrass you. We're doing this because I I got other guys that maybe we're running in there. We want work. We have depth we have to work on because in three weeks when it matters, I want to know that we can do this proficiently because it is a specialty thing. It is a niche thing that they do. You know, you're going to find people on both sides of it, though, right? Like, yeah. I can already see he doesn't agree with me. Like, it, like you know, like, and, and, and I, I get when it's when it's a part of what you do and you're not just doing it now when now if if Lima senior kicked off long every time and then you're up 38 to six you're like all right now we're gonna do it <laughs> like i got yeah, a problem with yeah. that when it's your kickoff yeah I, I i can stomach it a little bit more well i, I was actually having a, a ptsd flashback because uh, I, I, I kind of agree with you but uh, there was a, a time where i was the head football coach at evergreen and a certain uh, black and orange school um, in the NWAL onside kicked. Give me liberty uh, or center. <laughs> <laughs> uh, onside kicked um, when they uh, went up by 21 on us uh, in late in the fourth quarter. And um, I, I just remember not being very happy uh, about that. So, yeah, I've, I've been on that side of it. Um, I had Anna and uh, DSJ a couple weeks ago, and Anna was up 34 nothing uh, with about four minutes left in the game and they ran a fake punt and yeah. we almost had a riot in, in the press box because the Anna coaches were right next to all the DSJ people and they were letting them know that it, and Anna's whole argument was well we're trying to put it on film so for sales and Marion Local have to prepare for it but 
eh. You could have also done it earlier. Right, right. And, and right. But I, to me, the, those examples, yeah. even the one against you and the one that you just yeah. used, I, I still feel that that's different than sure. what you saw with Lima Senior because yeah. Lima Senior does it every single time. Like, every this time. is just what they every do. I, is it worth the bad will, though? I mean, maybe be prepared to do something else in case you, you get the hammer on somebody. Well, is that that's the talking point, though, is yeah. it if we're going to catch you off guard and maybe we're going to kick it deep this time and we're just going to try to race you to it because you got everybody up on an onside sure, kick. Like sure. now our novelty's kicking it deep, not the onside kick. Yeah. Like there's that, you know, conversation, too. Uh, let me ask you this. If it was 38, 34, would they have done it? Yeah. That's what so. they do, right? Yeah, yeah. I, no, that's, when, I, yeah. It, when it was yeah. eight six, were they yeah. doing it? Yeah, yeah. 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 So no, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a. What do you think? You got us over here st- yeah. putting our thoughts out here for everybody to yell at us. You see how he just kind of was like, no, I'm going to no, no, throw no, light no, this, no, and then no, I'll just step back. No, no, and no. See what I, I think it's, I think it's, a, I think it's a really interesting conversation to have because you, you made a point. You said that you know it's what they do, and you want to you know you want to show other teams what you do and. You want to practice it a lot, but at the sixth time in that game, I'm thinking, ah, what are you doing? There has to come a point where civility has to take center stage sometimes, and you're not going to lose the game. There, there was never, there was never any jeopardy where Lima Senior was going to lose that game. But part of me is saying it's what they do. Why, sure. why change what you do? Mm-hmm. So I have both sides, and and look. God love you. And Bill Lawrence sat right here and told us that's what they do. Yeah. And he and he wasn't and he said, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. Mm-hmm. He's matter of factly about it. I mean, his kids, they're average, they try to average 70 points a game. And he says, We're not trying to embarrass you. We want to get our kids up and down the field. We want to score as many points as we can. Blah, blah, blah. So he's he's very open about it. I just thought it was a great conversation. Well, and you wonder, and I don't, you know, and maybe it's a far fetched way of looking at it though, too. But you know, we always talk about when teams get away from what they do well, um, you know, whether it's trying to run clock out or it's yeah. you know whatever it is that's when you see mistakes happen and mm-hmm. that's when you see maybe injuries and things like that because you're doing things you're not used to doing you know it, it's enough well look we don't do anything other than an onside kick we yeah. block that well our positioning is well our kids know where to go blah 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 we do something different all of a sudden everybody's all over the place we're missing assignments yeah. you know but can you guys see where a coach would get absolutely upset? Yeah, absolutely I'd, I'd be upset <laughs> I, I, <sighs> Yes, but it's also if you I just keep going back to and it, whether it's Lime Senior or anybody, if that's what they do and you know that no matter what the score is, up or down, they're going to kick an onside kick, what are you getting mad about? It, what is there to be mad about? So here's what I'm getting mad about. You're up thirty two. Right, but you know that no matter if I'm down no, 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 thirty two no, 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 or no. I'm up thirty two, yeah. every single time I kick that ball, I'm gonna onside kick it. And you know that going in and I've done yeah. it against everybody yeah, else for two yeah, years. Yeah. I'm not showing you disrespect. I'm not rubbing it in. Sure. I'm not being a big meanie you about all of film. this. Yeah. This is just how we play. What is it that yeah. you're upset about? I didn't I didn't kick it deep every single time for 10 straight, and then when we're up 45 nothing, decide yeah. that I'm going to put some salt in the wound and squib kick that it and would, get an onside kick. Sure, sure. That would be a problem. Yeah. I, I guess it goes back to Lou Holtz, right? What, what do you say? It's our job to score and your job to stop us. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Absolutely. That's another great Three Wise Men podcast. Uh, Let's do it again next week. I'll be here. Let's do it. Let's do it again. You've been listening to Three Wise Men on WSN.